Good day, Grade 12. Welcome to the second lesson in Week 25. We're carrying on with optical phenomena and properties of material. In this lesson, we're going to join the Mindset Learn team as the teacher is all about the mission spectra. Please watch this video very, very carefully and then go do the assessment at the end of the section, well, in the Turnable system, and make sure you understand the work done. You already know about continuous emission spectra. For example, a rainbow. Raindrops diffract sunlight into a continuous band of colors which we group into seven colors. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. We remember these with the acronym RIGBIV. We can use a prism or a diffraction grating to make our own little rainbow. Here we see white light as it passes through a prism. The light is dispersed. The same effect would be seen with a diffraction grating. Dispersal means that the light is split up into its component colors. Here we see the same colors we see in a rainbow, red to violet. This spectrum appears as a continuous band of colors. There are no sharp boundaries between the colors. This kind of spectrum is called a continuous emission spectrum. We usually simply call it a continuous spectrum. This is not the only kind of spectrum. There are two main kinds of spectra, emission and absorption spectra. Continuous emission spectra are only one kind of emission spectra. The line emission spectrum is another kind of emission spectrum. In another lesson, we'll look at absorption spectra. In this lesson, we focus on line emission spectra. Let's say we have a gas, but we don't know what gas it is. We need to know its properties, for example, if it is dangerous or not. The gas's line emission spectrum can tell us which gas it is. What is a line emission spectrum? How do we see this gas's line emission spectrum in a classroom environment? And how will it tell us which gas it is? Well, we need to put our mystery gas in a glass discharge tube. This has a metal plate at each end. Here, the tube is held by a retort stand. Next to the glass tube, we have an electrical power source. We can call it a PD source since this provides a potential difference. We connect one of the glass's metal plates to the positive terminal of the PD source, and we connect the other metal plate to the negative terminal of the PD source. These connections create a potential difference across the gas in the tube. This makes the gas glow. We notice this best in a dark room. So we now have a glowing gas. But how does that help us make a line emission spectrum so that we can identify the unknown gas? To make and see the line emission spectrum, we need a spectroscope. This part of the spectroscope houses a small slit which lets only a narrow beam of light into the spectroscope. In the middle of the spectroscope is a diffraction grating. Remember, a diffraction grating diffuses light into its component colors. On the side of the spectroscope is an eyepiece. While the gas glows, we can look through this eyepiece to see a spectrum. So we'll put our mystery gas into the glass tube, connect the wires, switch off the light, and look through the eyepiece. Our gas glows because of the potential difference across it. Here we see a representation of the potential difference across the discharge tube. This causes the gas in the discharge tube to glow. In this representation, the spectroscope has a prism rather than a diffraction grating and a photographic plate rather than an eyepiece. Notice that as the light passes through the prism, it is diffracted to form lines of color rather than a continuous band of color. With a spectroscope, which has an eyepiece, if we look through the eyepiece, this is what we might see. This is not a continuous spectrum. Rather, it has dark and bright lines. 
We call this a line emission spectrum. If we were experienced scientists, we would immediately know that our mystery gas is neon, just from this spectrum. However, if we saw the spectrum through the eyepiece, we would know our gas is helium. So, each gas has its own unique line emission spectrum. We can think of this as that gas's signature. For example, here are the line emission spectra of helium and hydrogen. But how do these line emission spectra form and why are they unique for each gas? Let's join Diasha as she explains this to us. To understand why only some colors are seen, we need to take a closer look at what is happening on a microscopic level by looking inside the atom. Thanks, Diasha. Let's watch an animation for hydrogen. Notice the electron can be excited and fall back different numbers of energy levels. The color of light that is emitted depends on how many energy levels the electron falls. These colors form hydrogen's line emission spectrum. The red band of light is emitted when the electron falls one energy level. Green light is emitted when the electron falls two energy levels. When the electron falls three energy levels, blue light is emitted. And when it falls four energy levels, violet light is emitted. Diasha, please continue. Remember, the energy the electron loses or gains is always in specific values that are unique to each element because energy is quantized. In other words, it comes in packets or quanta. When an excited electron drops down to a lower energy level again, the energy is released as a photon of light. The energy of the emitted photon equals the energy difference between the two energy levels. Since the atoms of each element have a unique set of energy levels, the frequencies of light that can be emitted are unique to each element and can be used to identify that element. Can you recall an equation that can relate the value of the energy and the specific frequency of the light emitted from the electrons? This is because a photon of red light has less energy than a photon of blue light. Let's confirm this by calculation. The wavelength of the red band of light in hydrogen's light emission spectrum is 656 nanometers. Nano means 10 to the power minus 9. So 656 nanometers is 656 times 10 to the power minus 9 meters. The blue line has a wavelength of 434 nanometers. To find the energy of one photon of each color of light, we need to know the frequency of each photon. This is because we use Planck's equation to find the energy of a photon of light for each color. And for this, we must know frequency. We calculate frequency from wavelength with this equation. F equals C divided by lambda. Where F is frequency in hertz, C is the speed of light 3 times 10 to the power 8 meters per second, and lambda is wavelength in meters. So the frequency of a particular color of light equals 3 times 10 to the power 8 meters per second divided by that color's wavelength. We substitute the wavelength of the band of red light into this equation to find its frequency. And we substitute the wavelength of the band of blue light into this equation to find its frequency. Notice that the red light has a lower frequency than the blue light. We use Planck's equation to find the energy of a photon of light for each color. Planck's constant, H, is 6,6, .6, 3 times 10 to the power minus 34 joule seconds. We substitute values and calculate the energy in each case. Notice that a photon of blue light has more energy than a photon of red light. This makes sense because the red light is released when the electron falls only one energy level, whereas the blue light is released when the electron falls three energy levels.